So the full chip replacement has now been done. Um, so all those little cables going in there have been soldered and replaced where the chip was. Um, so you'll see uh, there's 42 cables going all the way across to here. Um, there's what well, you can see in the way of, um, sort of there's a glue that I've put in as well so that the, the cables just don't get pulled in any way. And they go down basically um, through uh, a series of, uh, I think, banks of seven I've done them in. And they go all the way into the uh, Adreno. Uh, so the Adreno is under here. And on top of it is basically a breadboard which has um, you know, sort of little connectors, um, pin connectors that I can basically connect those cables into. So at any time that if we need to replace the Adreno, I can just lift that board out, um, the breadboard, and then replace the Adreno and plug that board back into the Adreno. Um, the Adreno is then connected via a USB cable. So I've got a USB cable extender here that comes around and I've put basically a USB connector right on the back um, so we can connect um, a USB straight into it uh, and upload any new programs and things like that. Um, when you do any tweaks uh, or setting changes, they go in via that, uh, which literally, as I say, goes around and goes directly straight into the, the Adreno. We've then got a power cable, nine volt power cable that comes here. And I've put basically a nine volt um, uh, block in here. So it's a step down type um, transformer block. So the nine volts feeds the Adreno. So when the, the main power switch is turned on here for the Sony, that basically sends uh, two, 220 volts from these two pins into this side of the block. And then from that side out comes uh, the power to power the Adreno. So the immediately, as soon as you turn the power on for the stereo, the Adreno is then up and running with all of its um, ins and outs ready. There's a whole load of startups I've put on here. So you have default size for record, default whether you repeat or not. Um, send um, the arm home to the home position uh, and things like that. As I said, there's um, two analog inputs here that are reading the light sensors and um, everything else is digital so digital's ins and outs which come back and, and feed the board for the the ins and outs but the actual um, light sensors um, send in an analog voltage um, depending on uh, how light or dim it is for the, the record being detected on the on the board so that's it um, so that's the full installation of the complete um, Adreno board, all wired in, all programmed, and it's all basically programmed from a, um, a piece of software that I've used called Embryo. Um, Embryo um, literally controls all of um, the, the ins and outs. So all of my left hand panel here, you've got um, all of uh, the pin settings, um, all the ins and outs and then controllers that I've created that then control the ins and outs. So every button, every output is all controlled by individual little um, um, agents, they call them an embryo. Um, so like if I look at the front panel, for instance, um, so the front panel is all wired like this. So you zoom in a little bit. So where you've got things like, um, you, know, you press the forward button, well that goes and then runs an agent called forward button and, and sends a signal to make the, um, the arm go forward. Back button, you've then got repeat button, um, you've got the speed button, um, the repeat, let's say, uh, up, down. And then I've created these agents here that do that deal with all the, um, the functionality. So like if I want to send the arm home, there's like a home controller um, and that basically will um, manage how the arm gets back to the home position, um, how the, the arm is up and down, and how the motor is turning and at, at what speed. So all of these are all wired up and each one of these has a whole load of functionality inside it. So if I go home controller, um, there's a whole load of wiring and settings and stuff that it's monitoring within, within that. We've also got things like an auto start controller. So when, um, when we press auto start, and it's initiated, 
the thing then has to work out exactly what position the drop points are for um, you know, different size records that are going in. Um, and each one of these has its whole load of code that I've put in. So if I go and drill into one of these, you'll then see that there's a whole load of code that I've created. Um, so this is um, the arm counter. So it's working out whether the arm's moving forward or backwards and then sending the, the signals or increasing a counter or decreasing a, a counter accordingly. Um, yeah, so it's all, all challenging. Next, I'll just quickly do a demo of the record player working. Still waiting for a stylus to arrive. Um, so we haven't got a stylus, um, but yeah, I'll do a quick demo. So that's the um, base just screwed back on. So I've just put all the screws back in. Um, you can just about see in there where the Adreno sits. Um, but basically from the base now, um, you just wouldn't see, you wouldn't notice that we've put the Adreno in. Okay, so basic functionality. I can't fully test it because I haven't got a stylus in it, but we'll do that another stage. Um, so let's just bring an arm over. So the arm is, is up at the moment and I'm just going to turn it on and what should happen is it immediately will turn the Adreno on to um, the home. Um, so the home controller kicks in and sends the arm to the home position. Um, it also sets up defaults um, for, on this one you can just about see it's set to 45 um, and it's got basically repeat um, is turned off. Um, so we've got things like I can turn repeat on, uh, I can also then change the speed from 33 to 45, they, they work quite happily and you don't get locked until it starts spinning. Um, so if I start the, the motor up, press the motor start, um, that will start turning the motor and then at the minute it gets to speed, uh, the correct speed, the lock comes into play. So if I turn it to 33, it then flashes off a bit. So it's set to 33 speed, it's slowed itself down. So let's go to 45, speeds up, back down to 33. Okay, that's so the speed's working. Um, uh, also, if we use the arm across, that works. Arm back, works. I'll just put the uh, arm down just here at the moment, just in the position of where um, so the arm now drops. And it's dropped the arm back up. And I'll start the okay. So I'm send it back. That's fine. Bring it forward. That works. Press the stop button which will then immediately send it, stops the record working, stops the motor and puts the arm back in the home position. And at any, well, any stage as well, if the, the arm was down, so the arm has come down now, so it's down, and I press stop, the arm will raise, it's done, and then it brings it across. So always make sure that the arm is up, and then we'll also make sure that the um, arm is in the up position before it then tries to move it in any position forward or backwards. So if I take a record off and I press the start button, it should detect that there's no disc. And if there is no disc, it won't start the arm. 